The Pentagon ends its ban on transgender service members. The reality that has led to this historic change today. Um, I had the oxy that you prescribed me sure. for the surgery, sure. and that seems to really help. Rethinking pain management. The new program's training future doctors to use opioid painkillers as a last resort. I has to go across the line. Oh, that's right. So what I should do... You could do it down here. Tapping into their inner tinkers at San Diego State, the training that places teachers in their student shoes. KPBS Evening Edition starts right now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Amitha Sharma. Transgender people will no longer be discriminated against in the military. Effective immediately, transgender Americans may serve openly, and they can no longer be discharged or otherwise separated from the military just for being transgender. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says he's ending the ban because the reality is the military already has transgender service members in uniform. A RAND Corporation study estimates there are up to 6,600 transgender troops in the 1.3 million active duty force. Carter says he owes them and their commanders clearer guidance on deployment and medical treatment. A small percentage of the transgender service members are expected to seek out hormonal treatment and surgery. Today's announcement follows the decision earlier this year removing all barriers to women serving in the military. It also comes five years after the don't ask, don't tell policy was eliminated. Researchers have found nearly one and a half million Americans identify as transgender. Experts with the Williams Institute, a think tank at the UCLA School of Law, revealed today about half a percent of the country's population identifies as transgender. California houses one of the highest number of transgender Americans with more than 200,000 residents. That is 0.76 percent of the state's population. California ranked third behind Washington, D.C. and Hawaii. Why? The Charger Stadium plan has suffered a potential setback. The California Supreme Court has temporarily blocked a lower court ruling that said tax initiatives like the one for the Chargers Stadium need a simple majority to pass. The Supreme Court is reviewing that ruling and for the first time, it looks like actually and for the time being rather, it looks like the team will need a two thirds vote to prevail on their initiative currently awaiting qualification for the November ballot. It. The San Diego Union Tribune editor Michael Smolin says that won't be easy to get. Here you're dealing with something that, that isn't really a public service. It's something that we all enjoy, I think, for the most part, the Chargers and the NFL being here. But there's tax money involved, and that threshold is, is awfully tough to meet. The Chargers collected nearly 111,000 signatures to get the initiative on the November ballot, about 44,000 more than needed. The county registrar of voters is scheduled to finish verifying those signatures next month. San Diego-based Arena Pharmaceuticals announced sweeping layoffs today. The company plans to cut nearly three-quarters of its workforce, or about 100 jobs. Arena has only one drug on the market, and it has failed to reach a large number of patients. Belvique was approved four years ago to help obese people lose weight, but it's not the most effective obesity drug on the market, according to a recent study by UC San Diego. Arena plans to focus on developing new drugs currently being tested in clinical trials. Miles. From next week's Big Bay boom to Comic-Con, San Diego will host a lot of big events in July. KPBS reporter Jean Guerrero talks to tourism officials who say that adds up to a lot of money. I'm here at the Gas Lamp Quarter where tourism officials announced expectations for the month of July in San Diego. An unusual number of events are scheduled, the All-Star Game, Comic-Con International, and the Gay Pride Parade and Festival. That means hundreds of thousands of visitors are going to be streaming into San Diego from all over the world. I spoke with Joe Terzi, CEO of the San Diego Tourism Authority, who says this is going to be a record month for tourism in San Diego bringing in $2 billion. In San Diego in, in July is always very busy, but uh, this is by far going to be the busiest we've ever been in San Diego. He says it's in large part because of the draw of the Major League Baseball events. In anticipation of these events, city officials have been relocating groups of homeless people, moving their encampments away from the downtown area. 
But Terzi says he doesn't think that fixes the problem of homelessness and that the city needs to continue working to come up with a permanent solution. I, I think there's an effort to clean up the community. I mean, if you have 200 journalists from around the world here, you want to make sure you show yourself well. Terzi encourages San Diegans to take advantage of public transportation to get to all of the downtown events. He says the boom in tourism is expected to benefit the hotel sector, the restaurant industry, and other businesses. Tercy adds that hotel occupancy is at the highest level ever for July, at 95 percent. From the Gaslamp Quarter, I'm Jean Guerrero for KPBS News. The gun control debate is heading back to Governor Jerry Brown's desk. Today, the state legislature passed a series of changes to California's gun laws. One bill would require licenses and background checks for ammunition sales. Others ban possession of magazines that hold more than 10 bullets. This includes those that are detachable by using the tip of a bullet. We are legislators. This is what we do, we legislate. And the members here have been working on gun and ammo legislation for years. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, close to a decade, when I was first elected back in 2006. Uh, so it is, it is our hope that cooler heads will prevail. Over the last 20 some years, all the bills that have passed supposedly just cut down gun violence. Gun violence has gone up because it's not about the guns, it's about the individuals. All of the measures move on to Governor Brown. He has indicated that he will sign some and veto others, but not which ones. They're calling it a brazen attempt to circumvent the will of Congress. Nine of California's congressional Republicans are asking the White House to refuse the state's request to sell health insurance to people who are living and working in the country illegally. Governor Jerry Brown signed legislation this month mandating that covered California request a waiver of a requirement to verify legal residents. President Obama's Affordable Care Act allows federal agencies to grant waivers beginning next year. In the last year, Californians have spent as much as a dollar fifty more on gas prices than the rest of the country, and State Attorney General Kamala Harris wants to know why. According to the Wall Street Journal, Harris is looking into high pump prices in California and has issued subpoenas. Consumer activists believe refiners are manipulating gas prices by limiting supply. School is out for most students for this summer, but it's in session for teachers looking to improve their science and engineering lessons. KPBS reporter Megan Burks takes us to classrooms where teachers are learning to code and build robots. High school teachers from as far away as Florida and Hawaii are at San Diego State this week to get schooled in STEM. Project Lead the Way gives them hands-on experience with robots, wind tunnels, and circuit boards, lessons they can take back to their classrooms in the fall to make science and engineering fun. Point Loma High School teacher Kathy Schultz says training that puts teachers in the shoes of students is the best kind of training. And by going through it yourself, you actually see all the mistakes that the students are going to make and then it helps you to figure out ways um, to help them. Uh, so this is really important uh, component as opposed to just going through a curriculum in a book. Is It teaches you how to teach. It has to go across the line. Oh, that's right. So what I should do... You could do it down here. Project Lead the Way is put on by the College of Engineering. This year it's expected to serve about 360 teachers. From San Diego State University, I'm Megan Burks, KPBS News. UC San Diego graduates the most women in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. A study by bestcolleges.com also found that UC San Diego had three times the national average of graduates overall in those STEM fields in 2013. STEM graduates earn 35 percent more money than their peers straight out of college, according to the study. A large fire in the North County forced crews to shut down streets and suspend light rail service today. Hundreds of firefighters helped knock down the flames at an empty commercial building off Interstate 15 in Escondido. You could see thick smoke billowing for miles. Sprinter train service was halted between the Escondido Transit Center on West Valley Parkway. Service has been restored. Well, I was actually driving into work, so I was trying to kind of come in, and I just saw flames shooting up, so I ended up parking on Rock, St uh, Rock Springs and just walked in, and I just saw lots of flames, lots of firefighters. 
No one was injured. Firefighters are trying to figure out what started the fire. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says its agents acted properly in four separate shooting incidents dating back to 2012. One of those cases was just last year off the San Diego coast. In that one, a woman died after agents fired warning shots and crashed into a boat carrying migrants from Mexico. This is the first report ever from the Border Agency's Use of Force Review Board. Amnesty International has released a scathing report on the physical and psychological torture of women arrested by the Mexican army and police. Amnesty interviewed 100 women across the country who reported violence during their arrests. All described some form of sexual harassment or psychological abuse. 33 said they'd been raped. The report's been released as Mexican President Peña Nieto is in Canada to meet President Obama and Canadian Prime Minister. Justin Trudeau. Mexico has not responded to the report. More inmates are using drugs, even though California spent millions of dollars to keep drugs out of state prisons. A new report found positive drug test results went up after an anti-drug program began in 2014. Inmates in California are dying of overdoses at nearly five times the national rate. The study prompted lawmakers to cancel a planned $8 million expansion of the program. They want to invest more money into drug-sniffing dogs and airport-style scanners. New training programs are helping the next generation of doctors rethink pain management. Associated Press reporter Krista Forea explains why they're focusing on opioid painkillers as a last resort. With opioid addiction tearing apart families and communities, a new front to battle the growing epidemic, the patients themselves medical schools, training the next generation of doctors. I think that it's just really important to equip our new doctors with this ability to be able to talk to patients, to be able to know what's the appropriate dose of opioid to prescribe a patient and what's inappropriate. Schools are taking action after critics said they were failing to teach students about opioids, a class of drugs that includes powerful painkillers including morphine and illegal drugs like heroin. Recent studies have found many physicians prescribe opioid painkillers too often. I've tried Advil and Tylenol, it's not really helping. Using actors, the University of Massachusetts is teaching students how to identify if patients are suffering from addiction and when it's appropriate to prescribe opioid medication. Um, I had the Oxy that you prescribed me for the surgery and that seems to really help. Other schools are increasingly using similar simulations. There are these three other prescriptions. Is Who's Dr. Miller? Um, yeah, I just... I, must have been the doctor I saw at the ER. Opioid painkillers were blamed for almost 19,000 overdose deaths in 2014 in the U.S., a 400 percent increase from the year 2000. Hoping to set a precedent, medical schools in Massachusetts are rolling out a statewide curriculum on opioids, rethinking pain management. It was a situational issue in which we were told we had to treat pain. Um, we followed instructions and we eliminated pain uh, and then we created another problem. Dozens of schools across the country have received federal grants aimed to better equip students to screen patients for drug abuse. The thing that scares me the most is not being able to detect it. But with the rising number of opioid deaths, these future doctors are learning to confront it head on. Krista Fourier, Associated Press. The cost of delivering a baby in San Diego can vary depending on which hospital you go to. KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg says a new study highlights the huge variations in the price of maternity care nationwide. Oh. The study comes from the San Francisco-based Cast Light Health. The report compares the cost of a routine vaginal delivery in the 30 largest metropolitan areas. In San Diego, the cost ranges from a low of around $3,200 to nearly $14,000. Kristen Torres Mowat is a vice president at Castlight Health. She says San Diego's price variations are not unique. And it's a phenomenon across the country, and it's indicative of the inefficient and poorly functioning market for health care services. The report finds San Diego is the nation's 13th most expensive city for routine baby delivery. Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News. 
Warm temperatures and sunny skies are expected along the coast ahead of Independence Weekend. Temperatures in the desert areas will climb or continue to climb above 100 degrees. Steph Davis has more in tonight's KPBS weather report. Quiet conditions across our area this Thursday. Now farther off to the east, as been the case over the last couple of days, you'll notice some pop-up showers and rumbles of thunder across the four corners, even getting into parts of southern Nevada. But around our area, remaining dry out there, and that's what our current satellite and radar is showing. Tranquil conditions from Borrego Springs south towards Campo and extending towards the California coastline. If you're heading out about to enjoy your Thursday night, no problems to report weather-wise. Clear and mild in Borrego Springs, low 72 degrees. Quiet conditions in Mount Laguna, overnight low 55. Back to the upper 50s, Ramona and Alpine. A few clouds building into Oceanside with your low temp at 65. We'll also fall back to the mid-60s tonight in San Diego. Looking ahead to our Friday, still with that monsoonal moisture in place across the four corners, we'll see that active pattern across this area with showers and thunderstorms. However, bulk of the action will remain off to our east. Much of California will remain dry, hot across the inland, comfortable at the coast. If you're heading to the coast, especially to the beaches, the National Weather Service does have a beach hazards statement in effect through Friday evening. Watch for rough surf and strong rip currents. Here's a look at your five day outlook for the coast. If you're heading down for the weekend, clouds breaking for sunshine Friday and Saturday with your daytime highs in the mid 70s. Sunny and nice for your Sunday, high 73, and a beautiful 4th of July Monday down at the coast with highs in the mid 70s. Five day outlook across the inland areas showing a quiet pattern in place for Friday. Clouds will break for clear skies and into the day on Saturday with your high temps in the mid 70s. Partial sunshine Sunday, high 73. Now we'll see more clouds build in for our Independence Day Monday, though dry out there. So if you have any July 4th plans, they should be able to go off without a hitch weather wise and then partial sunshine returns on Tuesday nice with highs in the mid 70s. If you're getting away across the mountains for the weekend looking good sunny and nice on Friday highs near 80. We'll see an uptick in humidity for your Saturday. Mostly sunny Sunday and into your holiday Monday with highs in the mid 80s. It's going to be a warm one Tuesday as we push 90 degrees. Wrapping things up with your five day outlook across the deserts, mostly sunny and triple digit temps Friday and into your Saturday. Plenty of bright sunshine on Sunday, sunny and very warm for your July 4th. Monday will remain mild across the deserts into Tuesday. Steph Davis, KPBS News. The man highlighted in a wildly popular podcast will be retried. Adnan Syed was convicted of murdering his girlfriend in 1999 and was sentenced to life in prison. His case is documented in the podcast serial, which raised questions about his guilt. Today, a Baltimore judge ruled that Syed deserves another trial because his attorney failed to cross-examine a witness. The Film Academy introduced its latest class of 2016, and it is not so white. Oscar organizers drew negative attention earlier this year for the lack of diversity in nominations. The hashtag OscarsSoWhite went viral. Academy leaders promised to increase female and minority membership. The Oscar pool is set to widen with about 700 new members in the 2016 class. About half of those invited to join are women, and 41 percent are people of color. The car is king in San Diego, but under the city's climate action plan, that has to change. The plan wants more people to ditch their cars in favor of walking, biking, or riding public transit. It also promotes denser urban neighborhoods. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen says North Park offers an early test of the city's commitment to that plan. If you want some perspective on how North Park has changed over time, talk to Vicki Granowitz. Right now, we're crossing one of the neighborhood's main intersections, 30th Street and El Cajon Boulevard. Probably approved them. Granowitz has lived in North Park for nearly 30 years. Most of that time, she's also sat on the North Park Planning Committee, a volunteer group that advises the city on growth and development. Right here, development hasn't been very efficient. The area has had a lot of empty storefronts, vacant lands, underutilized spaces. 
So we're really hoping that with the new interest in increasing density and bringing vibrancy that this can become a really amazing area. Granowitz has been active in helping the city craft an update to the North Park Community Plan. It aims for denser housing and mixed-use development along the main transit corridors. The idea is with more people living within walking distance of jobs or near bike lanes and public transit, more will be able to get to work without a car. So, let's take a look. Where do you want to start with? Accompanying the community plan update is its environmental impact report. The city published it about a month ago. In more than 800 pages, the city analyzes how all of this new development will affect everything from air and water quality to noise pollution. Granowitz and I flip through the pages looking for an important section. The traffic. Is that in a different section? Transportation is the state's biggest driver of greenhouse gas emissions. And remember, the whole point of this community plan update is to get people out of cars. So Granowitz and her colleagues were surprised when they read some of the report's ideas for easing traffic, taking away space for bikes, and widening roads. I went, oh my god, that's exactly the opposite of everything in our community plan. That we are doing nothing but asking for bicycle facilities. I mean, the idea is to get people out of cars. So why would the city think widening roads and nixing bike lanes could actually improve the environment? The answer is complicated and wonky, but try to bear with me. The city used an old method for analyzing traffic called level of service. Under this method, high-density housing could be seen as bad for the environment because the surrounding streets may get more congested. Slow-moving cars pollute the air, so adding car lanes to speed up traffic would actually appear to reduce pollution. This has been the thinking across California for decades. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you too. Nicole Capritz heads the nonprofit Climate Action Campaign in San Diego. She and other environmental groups want the city to switch over to a newer way of analyzing traffic called vehicle miles traveled. Level of service is really how do we get people from point A to point B in their cars as fast as possible. Like it's a pretty one dimensional analysis. And vehicle miles traveled is how do we enable people actually to use different modes of transportation and get there also, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, but using not just the car, but also biking, walking, and public transit. State law is expected to make this new method mandatory by 2019, but there's nothing stopping cities from adopting it early. San Francisco did so in March. Capert says she understands San Diego needs time to adjust to a whole new way of doing things. But as we're doing these new community plan updates, the concern is that, well, wait, we're still developing our and deciding where we're going to do our community build out and our growth based on old kind of um, modeling standards. The city of San Diego declined an interview for this story. A spokesman said in an email that San Diego, like many other cities in California, is following the state's lead regarding vehicle miles traveled. And he said, switching to this new method shouldn't affect the city's ability to get people out of cars. Experts I talked to say that misses the point, that San Diego needs real numbers, data on how or whether all of this new development will change our behavior. The key question for me is, is it enough? And another key question is, are they pairing it with the right kind of new transportation infrastructure to make sure that there's that synergy to allow people who are living close enough to, again, bike lanes or bus or trolley to actually take a different mode of transportation to work? And I, I just am not sure that that is accomplished in this plan. The North Park Community Plan update goes before the City Council this fall. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. Video journalist Katie Shulev helped produce that story. San Diego's major parks may be getting a facelift. Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced a plan to restore Mission Bay Park and other regional parks, including Balboa Park. The plan includes a November ballot measure that would extend the funding stream for parks until 2069. It will guarantee that they continue to have access to millions of dollars from Mission Bay lease revenue for much needed upgrades for the enjoyment of our residents and visitors alike. The ballot measure will also accelerate high priority infrastructure projects in Mission Bay Park, 
such as lighting, bicycle trails, public restrooms, and playgrounds. The mayor's plan also relaunches the Plaza de Panama project, which was suspended in 2012 after facing legal challenges. Officials say the project aims to remove traffic from the heart of Balboa Park with new gardens and parking space. The city council must first pass the proposal before it gets on the ballot. I'm Judy Woodruff. On the next news hour, I discuss the world's refugee crisis with the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Power. That's Thursday on the PBS News Hour. Space fans are looking forward to a celestial rendezvous with the biggest planet in the solar system next week. The NASA spacecraft Juno is on its final leg of its journey to Jupiter. It was built to peek through the planet's thick swirling clouds. It will also map Jupiter from the inside out. NASA engineers hope Juno will send back the best close-up views as it orbits the planet for a year. Here's a look at what we're working on for tomorrow in the KPBS Newsroom on Morning Edition. The Swiss Army Man prompted walkouts when it premiered at Sundance earlier this year. That's tomorrow on KPBS Radio. You can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening.